So very good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to this cloud computing course. Now today we are going to uh, start about uh, third unit. As the unit three talks about the cloud computing mechanisms and architectures. So both the things we are going to be talk discussing in this uh, unit. Now as part of this, let we have, we are going to following the most of the content from the uh, book, the reference book, Cloud Computing, the Concept, Technology and Architectures by Thomas L. Okay, this is the most uh, of the content is covering from this book. So this is the content. It is uh, the unit three consisting of two uh, uh, main uh, sections. One is the cloud enabling technologies, the second fundamental cloud architectures. So these are the two parts as in every unit we have two separate chapters. So this is also consisting of two chapters. Chapter one talks about the cloud enabling technology. Chapter two talks about fundamental cloud architectures. Where in the first chapter, we are going to talking about the all different enabling technologies, like how we are going to using in the broadband networks, internet technology, data center technology, virtualization technology, web technology, multi-tenant technology, service uh, technology, all some sort of uh, the different technologies we are going to discussing about in the first uh, part, that is this one. In the second part, mostly all we are going to having seeing the different architectures which you are going to be using in the clouds, like the how we are going to be distributing the workload in the cloud, that type of architectures, how the resources are going to pooling, how scalable dynamically any increase in the scalability, how we are going to be doing that one elastically, how we have done it, the resources and how we are going to balancing the service, what type of architecture we are going to be using, how the busting of the, uh, if anything has happened, then how the architectures has to design and elastic disk provisioning architectures, redundant storage architectures. So these are the content we'll discuss in the chapter two. Now coming to the part one, which is the chapter one of the third unit that is cloud enabling technology. In this one, we are first will discuss about the first topic in this today class that is broadband networks and internet architectures. So without late, if we start of this, have a note of this, all of you. So in this broadband network and uh, internet architecture, in this topic, we are going to discussing about the topics as we have the style of the uh, agenda for every topic, what the sort of stuff we are going to be discussing inside that and how the concepts will go on. The flow we are going to giving here, that is the first is internet service providers, the shortcut we call as ISP. We are going to discussing in this, the first topic, broadband networks and architect, internet architectures. The second topic talks about the datagrams also called as connectionless, as you already studied in the computer networks like we have TCP, which is a connection oriented UDP is a connectionless. Is a UDP is also called as datagram. Now root based internet connectivity, how we are going to be uh, using with the help of the routers, how the internet facility we are going to access. In. And some of the technical and business considerations, and we are going to discussing some issues related to the connectivity issues, bandwidth and latency issues, and the carrier and the cloud provider means the service consumer and the provider selection issues also we are going to be look into this. So this is the broad way. Uh, what are the some subtopics we are going to be discussing in the first one. Coming to the actual that is broadband networks and internet architecture under that the first uh, the stuff we are going to discussing is ISP internet service providers. If you consider clearly ISP is we are going to be uh, called as is a freely where it is a service provider already in the second unit we have discussed clearly what actually a cloud provider means who is called a cloud consumer what is the uh, resources it resources we are having some sort of the different uh, terminologies terms we have already discussed as part of this internet what type of service provider is is the internet service provider is we can freely deploy operate and manage these are the three functionalities can be done by the isp deploy operate and manage the networks now how it will be done is if you see in the right hand side clearly it is mentioning with a clear architecture with a clear diagram it is showing tier one tier two tier three so this is a network which look like as this is all the auto marks where it is a connectivities these are the auto marks under this 
and whatever the hidden the here is called as nodes these are the called as nodes we can consider this is and these are all connectivities this is all, all the connections okay so we have tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 different tiers in if you see closely uh, without the content of left hand side if you see in the figure in the tier 1 all the nodes all are going to be connected to each other that is a fleet is going to be connected if you remember you have already discussed in the computer networks like we have different topologies hope you remember right so bus topology free topology different topologies are the topology is for the purpose of connecting like in the motherboard also we are going to using the bus buses means what it is a connecting from one component to another component here the component considered as a nodes or connecting to all these connections node one node two all this so if it is consider the first circle tire one this is a tire one it is a fully connected all the nodes are connected to each other in that tie two it is little bit of the partial oriented in the tie three it is some little bit of not connecting oriented in, in the sense here it is a y it is a combination of wire and the wireless and in the tire three most probably we are going to using the wireless so that is a variation how it going to be varies so if we come to the left hand side worldwide connectivity is enabled based on that is www worldwide connectivity is going to be enabled based on hierarchical topology composed this is hierarchical in the sense we say combination of different hybrids hybrids are going to be hierarchical topologies composed of three tires as i said you tire one tire two tire three coming to the tire one is the core this is the core here that we are going to discussing about the core made of large scale international cloud providers with massive internet connected interconnected global networks connected to this is going to be connected see here connected to tire two globally connected global network connected to tied to largest regional providers so it is a international cloud providers with a massive interconnected global networks connected to tied to here the connection to tied to here the connection to tied to here the connection to tied to here also connection to tied to so to the regional from a broader to the regionals from worldwide to country wide country wide to again it is a state wide state wide to district wide whereas in the tied to it is talking about the interconnected ISP connect with tier one providers as well as local ISP of tier two. So here both is a dual directional, bidirectional. Tier two is going to be connected to tier one providers as well as local ISPs. Local ISPs means internal, internal local ISPs. Here the local ISP, here the local ISP, local ISP of internet service providers of tier two, and also to the tier one. See here also it is connected to tier 2 is connecting to tier 3 right so here also connecting to tier 3 hence cloud consumer and cloud providers can connect directly using a tier 1 providers as an any operational isp can it is going to be cap enable the internet connection so this is the name of the figure is is a abstract how the structure of isp will look like so whatever the theory it is going to discussing as clearly mentioned in the diagram so the diagram focuses on how tier one is connected to tier two, tier two to tier three. So major, the tier one is a core one, whereas tier two is a regional one, whereas the tier three, it is going to be connected off as a local oriented. From there, it is going to be stepwise, it is going to be accessing this. Coming to the second sub stuff of this uh, broadband networks and internet connection, uh, internet architecture is datagram networks, also called as connectionless packet switching. So packet switching, if you are observed in the figure itself, when you are moving, the packets flow in the routers. Here, the middle is called as router. This is. So here, we are going to be arising the packet. So already you are aware of the packets, uh, how we are going to sending the datagrams, packets, like we are going to adding some padding, extra uh, data of the source address, destination address, and we are going to be adding some sort of uh, the uh, bits overloading over there to confuse to the hacker all some sort of things will be there in the packet so this is a system how we are going to be connecting it these are the packets flowing these are the packets flowing via the router so packets flowing out of the routers it is going to into the routers out of the routers and here it is going to be processing so the first step is going to be into the routers the second is process and queued and the third one is out of the router so where it is coming is from different systems it is going to be connect well, from, it is coming from different things so if you consider the theory end to end sender to receiver pair here the sender to receiver pair 
data flows means packets flow or are divided into packets of a limited size like we have 512 uh, or maybe 256 or 1024 that are received and processed through via what network switches what the way we are going to using here network switches and as well as routers we are going to use now then it is queued and forwarded from the intermediate node to the next one so this is how the connectionless packet switching has going to be done so each packet carries nearly maybe with the help of ip or the mac addresses so already are aware in the cn so it is to be processed and routed every source intermediate and destination source mediator is the intermediate node and the destination is a node so like this it is going to be doing the process now the third stuff of this uh, broadband networks and internet architecture is route based interconnectivity so just now i had discussed about the uh, network switches as well as the routers how it is going to be doing but here between the cloud consumer and cloud provider multiple isp networks are there because each cloud pro consumer having accessing different from the different providers maybe in your mobile if you are a consumer of your smartphone you are taking the prov uh, from the different cloud providers from one phone pay is one cloud provider whatsapp is one cloud provider facebook is another cloud provider irct is another cloud provider different cloud providers you are going to doing so based on that multiple isp networks and very obviously network failures or definitely will be there because if you are not updating the providers uh, patches files or if you are unable to do that any technical issues maybe fun failures are there so alternate network path are selected during the run time itself so uh, communications uh, it is going to be sustained during the network failures but which routing frustrations and latency also be very important so the third step is how you are going to be interconnecting is with the help of the first one is with the help of the isp second one is the datagram networks third one is the route based interconnect okay so how it will be done in the graphical representative machine manner see here if it is if you consider this a source if you this consider as a destination like already you are aware we have five layers of uh, the tcp uh, ip uh, layers or we can also use osl layers ml layers but if you see here 1 2 3 4 5 layers of the application transport interconnected and data link and also physical so in every way as i said you this is the mediator this is the mediator where we can use the network switches or we can use the routers based on our requirement somewhere each layer to here so in the internet uh, internet uh, networking you are going to using ip and in the data protocol or we can use uh, maybe with the help of the data link protocol udp or maybe have physical protocols like this you are going to be connecting to each other and from transport we can use the tcp and udp from application you can use the http or smtp ftp like the different protocols are going to be do this so this is how a simple uh, route based uh, interconnectivity how it look like this is already you are studied uh, in the cn coming to the fourth and last stuff of this broadband uh, broadband network and internet architecture is technical and business consideration and at this the first uh, issue we are going to discussing about the connectivity issues where it comes the connectivity issues means if you see graphically if you are observe closely here in the figure in the figure 4 talks about the architecture for the private clouds where you are going to be accessing different physical it resources where here in the fifth figure it is also the interconnector of the internet based cloud deployment models it is a private cloud figure 4 and this is internet based cloud deployment model now both of this if you observe carefully here the cloud uh, private cloud network is available here we are going to have the availability of cloud consumer networks where you are going to be accessing through the internet based cloud deployment models now this is normal already are aware this is a routing uh, how the switches are going to be done from the different users it is going to be accessing maybe from the mobile users from the mobile systems or from the desktop users we are going to accessing from the different cloud providers like this are the providers where they are going to using different networks from the different uh, providers say for example this is phone pay this is whatsapp this is another facebook or some of the different providers are going to be accessing with the help of the the uh, the firewall where we are going to be providing to access this this is the enter from there we are going to using the switches maybe network switches or routers based on our requirement so this is globally connected this is internet globally connected from different users are going to be as maybe you are accessing from through mobile you can access from the desktop from the laptop different and whereas in the here also you are going to accessing the same but the difference is internet based cloud deployment uh, models you are going to be accessing 
Now here private is specific. It is required so definitely is a subscription base. Whereas in internet uh, cloud deployment, the own clouds we can deploy it or we can have the uh, accessing from the private. But when you are accessing here, what are the connectivity issues means? Definitely from system to system. Maybe if you are accessing from mobile, we have some sort of connectivities uh, like we required some mobile data, have some Wi-Fi connection or some other thing. Maybe you are accessing from the desktop or laptop, some other connectivity issues or the where maybe some sort of LAN, if you are going to access with the laptop or maybe the um, desktop, we have required some LAN uh, point. So from the help of LAN only, we can access the internet way. So if you have not normal uh, proper protocols or their proper things or their any uh, between the source or intermediate or destination, if proper internet connection, then only we can access it or else it is a, we are going to be losing the connections. If you observe carefully, uh, when you are attending a function of having a crowd of the 100 people, uh, out of the 100 people, if 70% or 75% of the users are going to be having the same network, say for example, IDEA network or ATEL network or Zio network, same network are available, definitely there will be a connectivity issues because all the load for that tower, which is near to all the people who are near to that function, will be similar to a similar network. So at that time, it is a lacking of connectivity issues. Like we can see on-premises IT resources and cloud-based IT resources. On-premises means on paid, pay and use. So it is a corporate networks we can use here. And here it is an internet connection. Those who have the internet connection, they can use is freely. But it is a corp corporate network. We have some uh, proprietary things are required, limited access. And is external networks is required. And it is only internet connection is enough for this. And external users can access the corporate here. And but here, cloud providers with the help of internet connections also we can access. Both or can do it. The second technical and uh, business consideration is network bandwidth and latency issues. Bandwidth as the amount of time you are going to be spending for traveling of that packet from source to destination via an intermediate node, it will call as latency. So latency is the amount of time it takes a packet to travel from one data node to another. It is directly proportional to the number of intermediate nodes on data packets path. So from source to destination, how many number of intermediate nodes you are going to using, it is directly proportional to that. If the number of uh, intermediate nodes are two, the latency is two. Uh, it depends on how many number of intermediate nodes you are going to using, that much of time it takes to transfer a packet from source to destination. Okay. The third one is a cloud carrier and cloud provider selection. Like quality of service management across multiple internet service, the here we have ISPs packets over here as a providers, internet service providers is difficult to achieve in practice, requiring collaboration of the cloud carriers on both sides to ensure their end to end services levels are sufficient for business requirement. Cloud carriers means consumer and cloud provider selection. So between that, a proper understanding has to be required because every time when you are installing any cloud providing apps, it is accessing you, it is providing, uh, allowing, you have to allow some access, some permissions, like to access your contacts, to access your, to send the SMS, to access to the uh, the location, the current locations of that. The, the, you have to access, give the access to uh, any other, some sort of the apps or internal files has to be give permissions. Based on the, the understanding between the end-to-end -end services with both from the, both the parties between the cloud consumer and cloud provider, then only the quality of service management can be done in a proper way. If the understanding between the two parties are not good, then definitely is a problem between that. So that's uh, about uh, the first topic. That is what we have discussed is cloud, uh, the broadband networks and internet architecture. We have seen the ISPs, the ways, how, what are the ways we can do the broadband networks and is the one, the connectionless packet uh, switching, route-based connectivity. These are the three ways we have seen and also we have seen some of the technical and business considerations like the first connectivity issues, broadband and uh, network bandwidth and latency issues and cloud carrier and cloud provider selections. So this is about the uh, first topic of the third unit.